as you can tell from most of my videos, um, I spend most of my time in Los Angeles, but I just drove across the country with my buddy Tom, and uh, I'm going to be staying in Michigan for the summer, taking a class. And so I just went over to my brother's house, where I've been storing my motorcycle in his garage. Uh, this is the Honda GL500, the interstate model, and it's called the Silver Wing. And uh, it's, it's an older bike, it's a 1982. I bought it last summer. Um, I wanted something that I could ride back and forth to work while I was working in Michigan last summer. Uh, so I wanted something with bags and luggage, you know, something I could carry stuff on and lock things in while I was at work. And I found that these Silver Wings are super reliable bikes and they almost all come with luggage. So I used to ride sport bikes and when I decided I was going to buy more of a cruiser style bike it was basically because I was going to be riding it back and forth to work. And I wanted to be able to take it on longer rides. Um, first off, the seating position is very nice. You're seated very upright. Uh, most sport bikes have you leaned more forward. And I used to ride a little Ninja, which wasn't leaned too far forward, but it was just enough that my back would get a little crick in it. Uh, also, it has this driver's backrest, which folds down so that a passenger can get behind it, but it's also removable and adjustable. You can move it four different slots to, to the back or all the way to the front. Um, just depending on your own preferences and seating position. The handlebars uh, come back far enough that you don't have to lean forward whatsoever to get a hold of them. And one of the big things when you're on the road for a long time is you get fatigue in your wrist from holding the throttle. And this particular one has a throttle lock installed on it. You just press that lever down and it holds the throttle. But it holds it loose enough that if you push it forward, it'll still release. On the roll cage here, the, the engine guard, I have a set of highway pegs. So they're not necessarily the most relaxing leg position, but what they do is they cool you down. You get your legs up away from the engine and up away from the heat coming out of the radiator up here. You put it up here and the breeze blows right up your pant leg and really keeps you cool while you're cruising down the road. One other thing I love about cruising on this motorcycle over a sport bike is the ridiculous amount of wind protection. This, this windshield, I can look over it if I want while I'm seated but it's big enough that I could literally ride at 60 miles an hour without closing the visor on my helmet. I know it's illegal and you need to have eye protection, but the wind is gentle enough that it doesn't bother me whatsoever if I open up my visor. Also having all the wind protection like this just eliminates fatigue over the long run. Uh, when you're riding something like a sport bike and you go three and a half hours, when you get there you're ready to be done. But on this bike with all the wind protection, on the fairing, the windshield, um, only thing that's really exposed are your legs, and that's good for keeping you cool anyway. But with all this wind protection, I can ride three and a half, four hours, and when I get there, I'm ready to go for another ride. The engine on the Silver Wing is a V-twin, but it's in a little bit of a different setup. Most V-twins are set front and back with the two pistons in this direction. Mine is turned sideways this way. And so when you rev the engine, you can actually feel some of the torque. It, it kind of pulls the bike to the side a little bit if you rev it really hard. Um, and then, also different from most bikes of the era, it has a shaft drive. There's no chain, so the drive all goes through this shaft here to the back wheel. And that saves you from having to make any adjustments to the chain. It's much, it's much easier on maintenance. You don't have to oil the chain, you don't have to adjust it. Um, and it makes for a very smooth ride. For luggage, uh, it has two side bags and one center case. Um, and the center case on this particular one has been moved back with an add-on. Usually you have to choose between whether you're going to have the back seat or the top case, one or the other. Um, but the owner before me bought a kit where you can move the top case back, and so you can then have the rear seat, the top case, and both side bags at the same time. The side bags all have um, two locks, and they operate with the same key as the ignition. Um, and the top case, I'm not sure if it was original this way or not. It has a lock, but it has a separate key from the ignition. And then the top lock here is the same key as the ignition. You can see the side cases here have a decent amount of space in them. Um, they have these elastic straps in here to help hold in your luggage when you open it up while it's on the side of the bike so everything won't just dump out on you. I've got an assortment of bungees for strapping things down to the rear seat if I need to. Um, a lot of times I'll take that stuff out if I'm going on a trip and I'm already packed and I know what I'm going to need. Uh, but it's a convenient place to store it in the side case so that I don't lose it all, all the time. To remove these side cases, you just stick the key in the little slot here for the helmet holder. 
once you turn it, it pops up, this little metal here. And that's what holds the whole bag down. So then, come around to the front and press this button that's like a seatbelt release. And you may need to press that while you're lifting. And since I'm using two hands here, it can be tricky. Yeah. And it just lifts right off. So inside the compartments, you don't have a, a ton of space. It's definitely enough space to, you know, store jackets, sweatshirts, um, anything that you're going to need for the day. And if you were riding solo, there'd definitely be enough room to bring camping gear anywhere you go. One thing I definitely appreciate about this bike over my little Ninja is the helmet holder here, the simplicity of it. When you don't have a uh, bag on the side of the bike, locking your helmet on the side is extremely simple. All you have to do is throw the rings of your helmet over that little stud there and pull the helmet holder down and it just locks right into place. In order to retrieve your helmet that is on the holder, you just insert your key into the keyhole there and turn the key and that helmet holder will pop right up. In the fairing, there is storage on both sides. One side has a locking glove box. You just turn the key and the cover will pop right off. On the other side, all it has is a leather cover that snaps into place. And the previous owner before me used that to store communication equipment. Um, there's a there's a intercom there that's supposed to communicate between rider and passenger. Um, this is an old 80s tape deck, no presets or anything. The only thing on it that still works is the radio. Um, I would replace it, but at the moment I'm just kind of using the bike as is. I'm not really looking to spend a lot of money on it. So the radio has dual speakers up front here and they actually get remarkably loud. Um, through my helmet I turn it up to the volume I'm comfortable with and then when I stop at a stoplight I realize how loud the radio is blasting and I'm probably driving everybody on the road nuts. Because I got a lot of wiring in the uh, in the fairing with the radio and the communication system in there I installed this little kill switch here and basically what this does is while the engine is on and running this little light will be on letting me know that there's power going into the fairing to the radio and everything uh, but if I flip the switch off that light will go off and I'll know that there's no longer power going to the radio going to the communication system so that if I'm riding along and it starts pouring rain I don't have to worry about shorting anything out on the bike the last thing I had to do to this bike to get it fully legal for me to take the uh, road test on it was to, to install these new horns also for that horn system I couldn't get voltage to run through the horn system on the bike whatsoever um, so I actually installed a totally new switch which is kind of out of place but I needed to get it on there so I could take my uh, riders endorsement test um, so this totally new switch is nice and big so it's easy to get to even though it's not in the right spot um, but it's definitely hooked up to a nice loud horn when putting the bike into storage there's a few simple things I do behind this side cover here is the air intake and just to seal off that box from you know spiders creating webs and from small critters trying to build a nest I stuff a little rag into that opening and stuff it in there nice and tight so that uh, nothing can get into that air box uh, the other thing I do is I use uh, fuel stabilizer I fill the tank all the way to the top and put fuel stabilizer in it so the gas will still be good in six months next time I start it up and also because I fill the gas all the way to the top there's no air space in there to A, degrade the gas, and to B, rust the inside of the tank. The other thing I do to prepare it when I, I'm going to store for the winter, behind this side case is the battery. And so I'll usually pull that battery out and bring it into some place that's going to be warm. And then you can either throw a battery tender on it, um, or what I do, I just put it on a battery charger about once a month and you know give it 15-20 minutes of a charge. And then when I threw it in this spring, the bike cranked right up, so that seems to work pretty well. So after sitting all winter in my brother's garage while I was out in Los Angeles, she's a little bit dirty, so I got to get her all cleaned up, uh, change the oil, um, check the air pressure in the tires. I do have decent tread left, so I won't need to change those. But after that, she should be ready to go. So that's just a quick overview of the... Honda Silverwing. Um, you'll be seeing plenty more of it this summer as my buddy Tom and his wife Dana and myself and my girlfriend Tracy all have a motorcycle adventure planned for this summer. 
So I will be making plenty of video of that, I'm sure. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated as we plan our little adventure. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed.